the time that this happened, I was 17 years old. I had been living for a few years in a small house with my mum after my parents divorced six years ago. The house wasn't huge, but we had one floor with our bedrooms and a small garden. We also have a dog who isn't really that scary. He's just uh, one of those small dogs with like a, a lot of hair. His biggest default is that he barks a lot during the day every time somebody is close to the garden. That annoyed me too, and my neighbors a lot as well, but it's important to recognize that my dogs never bark at night and always sleep in my bed with me. Anyway, one night in the middle of the night, I had a dream where I heard a constant dog barking, and in my dream, I felt like it lasted for a thousand years, but I think it only lasted for maybe a few seconds because when I woke up from that nightmare, I didn't feel the weight of my dog on my feet. I felt like something was wrong too, and then realized that my dog was actually barking and growling. I didn't understand what was happening. I just looked for my dog and saw him on the top of the stairs. His head sort of turned towards the front door. The door opening to the garage was actually on the side of the front door. I jumped out of my bed, and I rushed to the top of the stairs where my dog was. And there was this shadow of a man standing just at the bottom of the stairs next to the front door. I wasn't even able to shout. I just took my dog in my arms by reflex and ran towards my mum's room. My mum had just woken up. She takes medication to sleep, so it's actually pretty hard to wake her up. But thank God that she did. And the door of her bedroom thankfully can be locked with a key too. Even though I was shaking like I never had, I still managed to lock the door. My mum understood immediately what was happening when we heard the footsteps coming up from the stairs. We froze in the corner of her bedroom and she grabbed her phone to call the cops. While we were trying to reach the cops too, the guy started shaking the door handle and then punching the door. After a moment he stopped and this psycho just laughed at us. That's when my mum came up with a great idea of shouting, I called the police, get out. After a moment, we heard him going down the stairs, still laughing. We didn't dare move until we heard the police officers come through the door, but when they arrived, nobody was there. But in the living room on the table, there was a note that apparently he must have written, and it said, See you soon. He said later that apparently the guy got in and out by my garage, which has a back door that at that time we always left opened. Immediately after that, though, we went to live with my grandparents for a while and moved out into a new house a couple of months later. We never did hear from this guy again, but we always check every door is locked before going to bed these days, and I also have a bit of trouble sleeping ever since then. In fact, for almost a year after that, I would always wait until it was about 4am to go to sleep, just to be sure that he didn't find us and try to sneak into our home again. When my son was six years old, we moved into a house where the elderly lady named Millie had unfortunately died. It was right next to my friend's house and they were having trouble renting it because everybody knew someone had died in this house. We were pretty much just starving students though so we jumped at the chance to live in the house for cheap. Also, we weren't believers in ghosts or anything so it wasn't like it was a problem. The house was nice and with a screened in porch and large yard. And one morning, two months after moving in, I found my six-year-old son in his four-year-old brother's room. The six-year-old never slept with the four-year-old, but I went into his room and I found that he had moved a, a rocking chair, his toy box, and his clothes hamper up against his closet door. I asked him why he did this. The six-year-old's room was directly across from the bathroom, and apparently he got up in the middle of the night and was sitting on the toilet when he saw a glow coming from down the hall. And he said that an old lady with a candle stopped at the bathroom door and looked at him. She then turned into his bedroom and went into his closet where she soon just disappeared. We didn't really know what Millie looked like so I asked him to describe her. I wasn't sure if it was just his imagination but he was truly terrified even if it was just a dream. 
He said that she was very short with white hair. She had on a, a blue robe of some sort. He said the robe had lines on it, but he didn't think that they were printed, but he still thought that he saw lines on the robe. He was kind of obsessed with the lines and being sexy, was having trouble describing it. But I went next door and asked my friend how tall Millie was. Oh, real short, she said. Maybe 4'7". And my hair started standing up then. So I said, do you know what color robe she had? And she said, Millie had a blue chenille robe, I think, that she wore pretty much every day. And at that, I really freaked out then because I realized that it was chenille fabric that he was trying to describe for the lines on the robe. And a six-year-old, at least mine, there's just no way that they would know what this fabric was. I first thought that maybe the neighbor kids had told him about the old lady dying and it was just his imagination. But the thing with the robe was just disturbing. I mean, I couldn't imagine kids going into that kind of detail for just a, a prank. A few months later we moved though because my son just couldn't settle down and kept mentioning seeing this old lady. After hearing this story, his pediatrician told me, don't you dare tell this child that he did not see a ghost. I don't want him to think that he's crazy and how dare we assume that we know everything that there is to know in this universe. And to be honest, I thought the pediatrician was pretty wise in fact. And I must admit that he made me a bit of a believer. I've always been good friends with one of my cousins, Cole, who is the same age I am. The two of us were not quite inseparable, but we always did get along very well together and were often found together, both in school, as we'd always wound up in the same class together throughout elementary school, and outside of it too. We were 12 and in the 6th grade, I was hanging out with Cole on a Friday afternoon around the later part of May. And we were psyched because it was the start of the weekend. We wound up at his house since he didn't live too far from me. And at one point my mum called to say that our grandpa was in the hospital. But while the issue with our grandpa wasn't expected to be life threatening. He was being kept at the hospital overnight for observation. And both my parents and Coles were planning on staying with him and grandma at the hospital. Since my mum and her sister were the two of their siblings who lived close by. I was told that I was given the okay to stay at Cole's house for the night, with Cole's 15-year-old brother Hunter being in charge while our parents were out. This was fine by us because I got along well enough with Hunter and he was never the bossy older brother, sort of cousin type, that some of my other friends said that they had to put up with. So we ordered out for pizza and enjoyed goofing off as boys that age tend to do. And at around 9 or so, there was a knock at the front door and Cole went to answer it. I was a bit curious as to who it could be at the time of night, and so I watched from a ways back. At the door were two older guys, and they said that they were with the city and that they were investigating reports about the water pressure supposedly being bad in the neighborhood. They asked Cole if his parents were home, and when Cole said that they were unavailable at that moment, which we were told to say to strangers if our parents weren't home, the guy started asking a bunch of questions about how the water pressure was in the house and if they could come inside to check. Hunter came over at that point and politely told the guys that the water pressure was fine and perhaps they should move on to check on other homes in the neighborhood. But the guys seemed reluctant to leave but eventually turned and walked away after Hunter started closing the door. After the door was shut, we just sort of looked at each other and shrugged, but didn't think too much of it after that and just went back to goofing off. Eventually, we decided to go to bed. Cole and Hunter shared a bedroom, and we all agreed that I'd sleep in there with them, rather than me hitting the sack on the couch or something like that, so that we could talk while we all just fell asleep, and Hunter grabbed a sleeping bag out of their camping supplies for me. And when we got into their bedroom, they stripped down to their briefs and... I remember Cole had mentioned to me once in a while back that they had started sleeping in just their underwear. Since I hadn't originally planned on staying the night too, I hadn't brought anything with me from home as far as overnight stuff was concerned anyway. But since I wasn't in the mood to sleep in my clothes, I stripped down to my briefs as well. Though I felt a bit embarrassed, I'll admit, even though we were all guys there and I knew they wouldn't say anything or be judgmental. 
but they climbed into their beds and I quickly crawled into the sleeping bag and after talking for a while about random stuff, we eventually fell asleep. Early the next morning, I got up because I had to pee and so I quietly got out of the sleeping bag and went and did my business in the bathroom. On the way back to the bedroom, I heard something in the family room which was on the opposite end of the house from the bedrooms and particular bathroom that I was using. I didn't pay too much attention to it at the time, thinking that it must be either Cole or Hunter, until I got back into the bedroom and realized that both of them were still in there. Trying not to panic now, I woke them up quickly and I told them that I thought somebody was in the house. They quietly followed me and the moment that we walked into the family room, we saw the two guys from the night before in there and it was rather clear that they were robbing the place. One of them started to move towards us as he pulled out a wicked looking knife. The three of us promptly raced to the front door, somehow managed to get it unlocked and open and we fled outside immediately. As luck would have it too, a cop was driving by at that very moment. We quickly flagged him down and told him about the two guys in the house. The cop called for backup and within a couple of minutes several other cops were there and they proceeded to enter the house and after some searching they caught the two guys. The cops figured out that the two guys must have entered from a window in the laundry room that had a broken latch and had probably targeted that house because while it wasn't empty they probably realized that there were no adults there and figured that if we discovered them that we could have been more easily dealt with than adults could have. To add insult to injury though while we were waiting outside while the cops searched the house both to get the two guys and to make sure that there was no one else with them some of the neighbors came out to see what all the commotion was about and this included some kids who went to the same school as Cole and me including a few who were in our sixth grade class with us. It was during that time that the three of us realized that we never actually had a chance to get dressed so just like in the stereotypical nightmare we had to stand outside in full view of everyone in just our briefs for what seemed like forever before being allowed back inside. When we went back to school on Monday, Cole and I had to put up with more than a bit of snickering stares and ribbing for the next few weeks until school ended for the summer. I live in a high crime country so my home has an alarm linked to private security and the property is surrounded by a high wall too. There's also a roll down steel garage door in the wall which gives access directly onto the street. So I had just had a baby a few days ago and was sitting in the lounge watching TV while the baby slept next to me. I hear the exterior garage door sort of making opening noises but think that it's probably just my husband stopping by to check on us since the baby is so new and he was working close by that day anyway. But then I realized that my dogs are barking and it hasn't changed pitch. If it was my husband coming home, then their barks would have changed to exciting yipping. So I sort of hobble into my bedroom, which has a view of the exterior door, and see a strange man has popped the side of the door open with a crowbar and is slithering through the gap into the property. No problem though, this is why we have security. So I sort of hobble run, remember I just had a baby, to the lounge and hit the panic button which is supposed to set off the house alarm and send an SOS to the security company. But the panic button does nothing, it's completely dead. I ran back to the bedroom, my mind is just blank from the panic and by now the man is starting to climb through the window. It dawns on me that nobody is coming to help me. My new baby is just in the other room. There's no time to phone anyone, so I hulk the heck out, bunch up my shoulders, start screaming like a banshee, and run directly at this guy. I'm 5'2 with a deflated pregnant belly, so I couldn't have looked that scary, but for whatever reason, he must have been pretty scared because he just let go of the window frame and literally fell onto the ground before scrambling up and back out of the popped open outside door. I was shaking and crying because if he had kept coming, I, I really don't know what I would have done. But my husband was home within minutes and we fixed that panic button the same day, but it was a close call, that's for sure. When 
I was 17 or 18-ish. I was driving home from a friend's house after a movie marathon. It was around 1am when I left and a decent drive. And not quite halfway though, my gas light came on. Now, I've had a few creepy catcall experiences at gas stations and was a little paranoid stopping that late in the middle of nowhere as a 110 pound teenage girl. In the end, I think if I wasn't so cautious, I actually would have been kidnapped or even killed. The first gas station I came across was well lit and in a pretty open space. I drove up to the pump and I looked around my car mirrors before getting out. As I was starting to pump gas, this normal looking guy comes out of the gas station shop and starts smoking a cigarette. The pump kept clicking off and not working so I started messing with it trying to get it to pump. This guy starts watching me and he begins laughing. I assumed that he was just laughing to himself watching a teenage girl trying to pump gas and after getting maybe a, a quarter of a gallon I think, I just gave up and I moved to a new pump. And after this point, if I didn't do absolutely everything that I did, I would have been screwed for sure. But when I got back into my car, I locked my doors just to drive to the other pump. I checked all of my mirrors before getting out or shutting off my car again, an old 90s beetle that didn't always start right away. And that was when I saw the guy walking up to my car. He was smiling, walking up to the driver's side window. Not wanting him next to me, I rolled down the passenger window. He paused for a moment, then smiled to himself and walked to the passenger side. He then stuck his head all the way inside my window to talk to me, and he said, Hey, I know this seems a little weird, but uh, I promise I'm not a creep or anything. My car broke down, points to red SUV, and I need a ride home. It's just a half mile up the road that way. I say, uh, sorry, but uh, I don't know you. He says, oh, uh, nah, I, I totally get it. I, I thought it was pretty weird as I was walking up here, but it's only half a mile up the road and I'm just totally stranded. I say, I wish I could help you, honestly, but I really don't know you. Sorry. He says, yeah, yeah, I got you. If you had a truck or something, I'd offer a ride at the back. Looks expectantly. I say again, uh, sorry, but no. And all of a sudden, he looks pissed. He yanked at my door, but I had it locked before. Then he reached for my side of the door handle through the window. But my car was still running and I slammed it into first and I just peeled out as he opened the door. Luckily, the car taking off slammed it shut and he fell off and I sped off. I called the police after I got away and they looked at the gas station cameras and right after I left, he got into his red SUV and drove off. If I hadn't locked my doors the second time, I would have been screwed. If I let him come to the driver's side window, he would have grabbed me. If I had shut my car off, I wouldn't have been able to drive off in time. And if I didn't double check my mirrors, I would have been outside my car when he came up to me. When I was in high school, I was good friends with a girl called Emma. Emma was kind of quiet and shy, but always was there if he needed her. When I finished high school, though, I lost touch with Emma, as what happens to a lot of friendships after school. Two years later in college, though, I started dating a guy called Ben, and Ben's best friend, Gary, was Emma's boyfriend. After discovering that we all knew each other, we started to hang out again. One of the nights we planned to all hang out in Gary's house, have a few drinks and play a few games. Myself and Ben showed up at about 8pm to Gary's house and Gary said Emma should be over soon. But that was fine, I mean, we opened our beers and started drinking. It was nearly 9pm and Emma still wasn't here so we decided to ring her. Emma answered and apologised for being late. She said that she was just finishing up getting ready and should be there soon. At 9.30pm, there was still no sign of Emma, so we called again. This time, her younger brother picked up the phone. Her brother was 15 years old at the time and had told us that Emma was not feeling that well and was in the bathroom. Gary was worried and asked if he could head over and check on her, but her brother was adamant that he was looking after Emma and she was alright and to enjoy our night. But we didn't go home and instead we just kept drinking and hanging out because well, we thought Emma was just had the simple flu or something. 
Just after 10pm, we decided to call one last time and check up on Emma. Again, her brother answers and calmly told us that Emma had gone to bed and she'll call us in the morning. We left it at that, believing that she was safe at home in bed and we didn't want to annoy her brother by non-stop calling. But that night, Emma's mum returned home at 12am to find Emma dead on the kitchen floor. Emma had been bludgeoned to death by her younger brother a couple of hours earlier. We later found out that when Emma was leaving to come to us, she and her brother got into a fight about something ridiculous, and he beat her with a baseball bat and then stabbed her over 51 times. Since her brother was a minor, he wasn't going to get sent to prison. Instead, her brother pleaded insanity and was sent to an institution. A lot of this information was not leaked as the accused was a minor, but I do know that his parents stuck by him and he was released after four years. This happened about eight years ago and I've never told this story in its entirety. So I was hanging out with one of my female friends one night and we decided to go for a walk to a nearby park. We had a bottle of spiced rum that we planned on drinking once we got there, but we ended up having some on the way. But the walk to the park was about two to three miles from where we started, and it took us a little over half an hour to get there. It was around 7pm early fall in Minnesota, so it had started getting dark when we got to the park. We're talking and drinking and messing around on the park equipment for a little while before we decide to go and sit on one of the benches that they have there. It's getting a little later at this point, and a little bit cold too when the sun was setting, so we just huddled up on the bench and continued drinking and just talking for another good hour. The sun finally sets, and we're just having a casual conversation about who knows what, when we start hearing this low hum. Neither of us thought too much about it, thinking that it was just construction or traffic or whatever, seeing as we're in a public park in a very populated part of town with houses within throwing distance in any direction. So we ignored it and continued our conversation as it got darker. And we didn't really have a plan for what we were going to do after this, opting to see where the night would take us. But here is where it starts getting weird. So as we were just chilling on the bench, we were facing an open baseball field with minimal fencing. It's dark by now and as we're talking, we start hearing the low hum again but this time it's louder and we can kind of hear which direction that it's coming from. We both stop and look across the field and we see what looks like a, a shadow. We sit there and watch it for a second as it kind of sways, thinking maybe it's a, a person or something. About 30 seconds pass and this thing starts getting larger and closer as well. We're freaking out now because this black mass is probably about 12 feet tall and maybe 6 feet across and it's coming right towards us. It gets maybe within 20 yards of us and then just nothing. I had blacked out, waking up the next morning on the porch of my mother's house about a mile away from where we were. I had a terrible headache too. Although, that might have just been from the rum. My mum is freaking out asking why I have cuts and bruises everywhere, thinking that I got into a fight or something. I told her though that I had no idea. I sat there for a couple of hours just trying to recollect my night, trying to figure out what the hell happened, and then I get a call from the friend that I was with. She was in the hospital with a broken wrist and a few scrapes. She asked me what happened and... I didn't have an answer. She told me that she didn't remember anything after the low hum and woke up at the hospital. To this day, I have no idea what actually happened that night. I have since lost contact with that friend that I was with, but last time I talked to her, she had no more answers than I did. I would love to know if anyone has had anything similar happen to them. Oh, and uh, if anyone is interested in where this happened, look up Cavell Park in northeast Minneapolis, Minnesota. I haven't heard of anything else happening in this area, so I don't have anything to go on, and right now I'm just looking for some answers. When I was maybe six or seven, my mum had forgotten to pick me up after school one day. This was actually pretty normal, so I just started walking home by myself. 
It was maybe uh, an hour long walk in the Florida heat and because I'm so little I'm pretty much instantly wishing that I had a ride. Once I get to the part of my walk that starts taking me through neighborhoods, I notice a car slowing down and pulling up to me. The window rolls down and I can see an older man. In my memory his face is literally hidden in a shadow and a kid, maybe 9 or 12, I'm not really sure. I remember thinking that he was a pretty big kid and the kid leans over and starts talking to me. I can remember him clear as day, dark brown hair that hung over his eyes but was neatly trimmed like he'd just gotten a haircut. Brown eyes, brown jacket, with his backpack by his feet and a striped shirt. Hey, uh, do you want a ride? He asked, the kid, not the driver. I nodded and climbed off the wall that I was balancing on. I remember thinking, it's okay because there's another kid. But when I took a step to get off the curb, something just stopped me. It was like someone made a fist around my heart and just squeezed. My chest was tight and I had the overwhelming instinct to not get in that car that is. I shook my head no and I just kept walking. The car followed me for a bit so I started cutting between trailers and staying away from the roads. I eventually lost the car and I made it home safely. Maybe a week or two later, I'm not really sure, you know how hard it is to remember time when you're that young, but my mum and her boyfriend are high just passed out with the news on. I'm playing with my dolls and I look up to see the news anchor talking about a missing little girl about my age. And I just remember instantly thinking about that car and the kid. I wanted to tell an adult, but my mum was always either high or never around, so I waited another week before I told a neighbour and she called the police. I told them everything that I knew until my mum picked me up and took me home. Unfortunately, the little girl died. I don't remember her name, but I remember my mum talking about it and bragging that her kids were too smart to get taken. It made me feel really bad to hear her talk that way as well. I don't know if they ever caught who did it, and I don't even know if it was the man and that kid, but whoever it was, I hope someday that they're brought to justice. This was around a year ago in July of 2018. So, I was on a trip to Goa in India with some of my friends, and we were on this rented yacht in the Arabian Sea and Indian Ocean for the night. A lot of us were drunk as hell, except for me. I stayed away from the bottles that day because of a bet with a friend. He bet me $20 that I couldn't go two vacation days without drinking or smoking. Early on in the night, some of my more intoxicated friends decided to look out the vast sea and yelled excitedly that they'd seen mermaids around us, which turned out to be dugongs, marine mammals commonly mistaken for mermaids. This was at around 11.30 or 12 at night, and I helped get them back inside with the others. The party had died down by around 2 or 3 in the morning, and I decided to enjoy the view of the sea with a good old late night snack, a pack of barbecue Lay's chips. I was about halfway through the pack too when I noticed these strange human-like figures coming up out of the water and I, assuming that these were the mermaids seen by my drunk friends, decided to go and get a closer look. But then they formed what I think was a circle around the boat and they drew closer. And now I could tell that they had long dark hair. It was a moonlit night and that they had grayish white faces. They didn't rise very far above the water, but I could only see their shoulders at most. I began to assume that they were somewhat ugly mermaids in poor lighting or something, and I tried waving to them, to which they all stared in my direction. They began to emit what I now feel was the most ghastly wailing that I had ever heard. But the strange thing is that it was oddly mesmerizing, and as I inched closer to the railing... I felt just a, a strong urge to join them in the water, but I started to back away when I saw their eyes. They had no irises or any white, and they were just completely black. Their mouths seemed to grow in size, and that was when my eyes convinced my ears to not give in. I dropped my chips, and I pulled away from the railing and fought my urges to jump over, and I just ran inside, shutting the door behind me and falling to the ground. 
Everyone else was asleep and the wailing just stopped abruptly as soon as I went inside. And I was far too afraid to go back outside, so I decided to just lose the bet and have a fairly good amount of Henry and rum, plus half a blunt that my friends had left. I eventually passed out and the next morning no one was missing, so that was good. But when I told everyone, no one believed me and we had to head back to the hotel in the afternoon. About a year ago, I went on a trip up north to go camping. I needed a break from everyday life and some me time. But the woods weren't small or a popular camping spot and I was full on prepared to just rough it. All I brought with me was the necessary provisions like my tent, my set of matches, a lighter, my Swiss army knife, a flashlight and a few other knickknacks that weren't meant to last me the weekend. I set up camp, not far from a stream that led up to the main highway, and decided to go and take a look around the woods, get a sense of the wildlife and all. And around an hour or so later, I came across this cave that kind of dipped into the ground. I decided to take out my flashlight and shine a light into the cave to see what was in there. After doing that, I noticed that after the cave dipped down, it seemed to form some sort of a passageway. There also seemed to be marks that resembled scratches on the walls from where I was looking down, so I thought maybe some sort of animal lived in it, maybe a bear? I stupidly decided to take a look inside, and as I crouched down into the cave and started walking, semi-crouching for a bit, I walked inside it until the wall seemed to have gotten more apart, thus giving more room for movement. The cave was pretty dark aside from the light from my flashlight too and as I walked in the cave for no more than around 5 or 10 minutes, I kind of lost track of time though for a bit so it's just an estimate. I began to hear some sort of scurrying. At that point I was kind of too scared to keep going so I turned around and I headed back in the direction that I came. But as soon as I began climbing out, I kid you not, I heard something running behind me. Not natural running either because whatever it was, was running on all fours. But it was definitely too light to be a bear and not heavy enough to be anything smaller than a wolf, but the scraping sounds that it made while running did not resemble a wolf at all. At that point, I just kind of booked it out and I ran straight from my campsite. Aside from the rest of the forest, my camp was in a well enough lit area and just shy of the wooded area near the stream, as I mentioned before. And just as I left the wooded area too, the running just seemed to stop. Too paranoid though, I kept an eye on the woods that night and I didn't see anything definitive, but from the corner of my eye, I could have sworn that I saw what resembled a humanoid figure standing around six to seven feet tall. It was thin and somewhat hairless. I don't really know how to describe it because I didn't really get a good look, but as I blinked, it was gone. I then decided to grab my stuff and I headed to my car which I had parked in my campsite and drove back onto the main highway via a road that cut through the woods, still following the river. I must admit though that I was still pretty terrified, especially when it felt as if my bumper had hit something when I made one of the turns onto the highway, but at the same time I brushed it off as all just being my nerves and I was a bit unsettled. After I had made the long drive home, I decided to settle down and take a moment to collect myself. When it was time for bed, I found it really hard to sleep because I was pretty scared, but eventually I just kind of drifted off. At least until the creaking began. Ever since that day for the next month at night, I've been hearing this creaking noise. The sound of steps or movement or something... But the worst is the sound of scratching made across my walls as if something is dragging its nails on them. I didn't know what to do, but whatever came back with me didn't just want to kill me. It honestly seems like it's trying to toy with me, savoring me maybe. Obviously, I was terrified. Terrified that one day it'll have had enough of just playing with me. Within that month, I also received the unfortunate news that my mother had passed and actually left the house to me. And despite how sad it made me, I will admit that a part of me was relieved. I put my house up on the market and I went back to my childhood home and from my contact with the agent in charge of my old house, I know that it's been sold by now. It's been a few months and there was no sign of this thing until last night. 
because last night I heard the scraping coming from downstairs and I was so scared that I couldn't go to sleep. I really don't know what this is and I have no clue as to what to do next, but if any of you guys have any ideas, I would love some help right now.